They seek him here, they seek him there. His clothes are loud, but never square. It will make or break him, so he's got to buy the best. Of London town, eagerly pursuing all the latest fads and trends, cause he's a dedicated follower of fashion. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Thinks he is a flower to be looked at. When he Dedicated follower of fashion Oh yes he is, oh yes he is Oh yes he is, oh yes he is There's one thing that he loves and that is flattering One week he's in polka dots The next week he's in stripes Cause he's a dedicated follower of fashion Hello, welcome to our 242 live service. We're currently on the second of a series we call Love Your Neighbour, where we're looking into ethical justice issues. As you can tell from that glorious video we just watched, tonight's service will be looking into fashion. But before we do that, we're going to hear from Ian, who's going to read us Deuteronomy 6 to show us just why we're taking time to look into these issues of ethics during our services. Deuteronomy 6, 4-9 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the doorframe of your houses and on your gates. Clothing production is the third biggest manufacturing industry after the automotive and technology industries. Textile production contributes more to climate change than international aviation and shipping combined. It is estimated around the world about 107 billion units of apparel and 14.5 billion pairs of shoes were purchased in 2016. In the end, it all comes down to the way we treat our clothes. Buying new clothes without thinking twice is not only budget unfriendly, but also unsustainable. It is our duty as consumers to look a little deeper to ensure that our hard earned cash is going to companies we want to support. Fast fashion focuses on speed and low costs in order to deliver frequent new collections inspired by catwalk looks or celebrity styles. But it is particularly bad for the environment as pressure to reduce cost and the time it takes to get a product from design to shop floor means that environmental corners are more likely to be cut. Criticisms of fast fashion include its negative environmental impact, water pollution, the use of toxic chemicals and increasing levels of textile waste. So as Sarah was sharing with us earlier tonight in our 242 live service, we're continuing this theme of loving your neighbour and looking at these ethical and social justice issues from around the world. And tonight, we're focusing on the fashion industry. Now, this is one of those industries that we can't really avoid. We all wear clothes, and I'm grateful for that. Don't get me wrong, if you're watching online tonight, obviously you can be dressed however you wish. But I really hope that those of you who have come along this evening haven't taken us too literally when we said that legally you just have to wear a mask. I do hope you have come fully clothed as well. And so it's something that we all participate in. It's something we all are involved within this system. So why is it such a big topic or an ethical issue for us to consider this evening? Well, as we've heard from some of our young folks, reading out those statistics and facts, the fashion industry has a huge impact on climate change and emissions. And in fact, the industry itself as a whole around the world has changed dramatically over the past 
couple of decades, focusing on producing high volumes of items, really quickly replicating whatever is on trend at that particular cultural moment. But the trouble with this kind of approach is that the items are neither designed to last in the long term, or whatever trend they are tying into simply disappears as quickly as it came in, resulting in the need to produce more items more quickly to ship them out and distribute them all around the world at rapid rates to make them as cheaply as possible in order to get customers buying high volumes and to maximize profits for the companies who are making them. Which also has a knock-on effect of huge numbers of items being thrown away into landfill every day as they're, not, they're either unwanted, out of style, or haven't been made well enough to last in the long term. So it's a model that's entirely based on quick profits and rapidly changing trends and styles rather than on quality and longevity. I'm sure we all know stories about fast fashion companies where they outsource their production to factories in the Far East or in Eastern Europe, where prices are lower or the standards and care for workers is also worryingly low. So we might think, well, maybe if we make sure that we're buying things that were produced here in the UK, that were made in Britain or within the EU or the US perhaps, that's our way around it because then we know that things will be better quality and there'll be fair treatment for workers. Well, that's not always true because some companies in an effort to seem more ethical and to make customers assume that their clothing is better produced are making their garments here in the UK so that we assume that workers are being paid fairly and treated well. <clears throat> but as an undercover report from the Sunday Times in 2019 discovered, there were actually sweatshops operating here in the UK today. Factories where workers, often migrant workers, were being forced to work long hours, were being paid only around 40% of the national minimum wage, around £3.50 or thereabouts, and were subjected to unsafe and unsanitary working conditions. So just because things are being made here in the UK or it has that made in Britain sort of brand on it, doesn't always mean that it's going to be more ethically produced. We need to keep looking a little bit deeper. So we might then think, well, maybe if I buy higher priced items, go for more of the, the high end fashion lines rather than the, the budget ranges or the supermarket options, maybe then things will be better because there's more money going in. And so there's more money within the system. There's more money to trickle down to those working there. Well, unfortunately, this often again isn't the case. In fact, there's another worrying trend amongst the really high end fashion houses because these kinds of stores don't want their products to be associated <clears throat> with being discounted. They want to maintain that exclusive elite brand identity. So when ranges go out of style or at the end of a season, rather than marking down items that they have left and discounting the remaining stock, these leftover items are often incinerated or sent to landfill. Perfectly good items of clothing going to waste simply to protect the identity and the exclusivity of the brand. And actually many of these high-end stores are just as likely to have their production lines outsourced to cheaper markets. So just because you as a customer are paying more at the till, it doesn't always mean that there's more money going down to the workers within the production line or that the company is working any more ethically in its practices. Clearly, these problems run deep and we need to dig under the surface and ask more probing questions if we're really going to see what's going on. Workers' rights of fast fashion employees are strongly violated. Once you know that over half of fast fashion employees don't get a living wage, the overall mistreatment of these workers doesn't sound like breaking news. However, the working conditions are still worth mentioning and prioritising. 
Fast fashion factories are often dangerous for workers. The most well-known proof of this is the collapse of the Deca garment factory in 2013 that took the lives of 1,134 people and left around 2,500 injured. 93% of suppliers analyzed supplying fast fashion brand Boohoo.com had at least one instance of non-compliance with the company's audits in recent years on issues including minimum wage and unauthorised subcontracting. Factories were found to have locked fire doors, filthy toilets, buildings in deplorable condition and no wholesome drinking water. These factories were not overseas, but right here in the UK. Around 260 million children are in employment around the world, according to the International Labour Organisation, and of them, the ILO estimates that 170 million are engaged in child labour, defined by the UN as work for which the child is either too young, work done uh, below the required minimum age, or work because of its detrimental, na detrimental nature or condition is altogether considered unacceptable for children and is prohibited. Now, child labour is forbidden by law in most countries, but continues to be rife in some of the poorest parts of the world. Many of these child labourers work within the fashion industry um, and the fashion supply chain, making the textile garments to satisfy the demands of Europe, the US and beyond. There are those who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground. There are those who hate the one who upholds justice in court and detest the one who tells the truth. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Therefore, the prudent keep quiet in such times, for the times are evil. Seek good, not evil, that you may live then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings, and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. So, we're all part of this system. We all have to participate in some way to find clothing and, and to to buy the, the things that we're going to wear. I mean, unless we're going to start going out and making our own clothes and taking on that kind of approach to, to things. But actually, even then, there would be the same questions about where to buy the materials and is the, the textile that's being produced that we're buying to make our own clothes, is that any more ethically produced? So, I mean, really, unless we want to go full kind of caveman approach and go and hunt and gather and get ourselves something and, and find the materials ourselves in the first place to make our new outfits, there are always going to be ethical questions to consider. And we've heard from the young folks tonight about the impact that it has on our world and the truly awful conditions that many of the workers within this industry are forced to work within. Which really brings us to the heart of why we are looking at this issue as part of our Loving Your Neighbour series. In the passage that Scott read for us from Amos, the prophet tells God's message to the people saying that they have failed to stand for justice. 
they've oppressed the poor. Or even if they haven't done these things themselves, they've allowed these things to take place within their society. And this is in spite of all that God has spoken to them through his laws. Those laws that were meant to be written on their hearts, that they were to talk about and impress on their children and were to be the foundation for all of their lives. And among these laws, they're told not to oppress the poor, to stand up for the weak and those who are suffering, to treat each other with fairness and compassion, to look after foreigners within their lands and not to take advantage of people. But they fail to do these things. And so God says to them through Amos that when they gather for their big religious festivals, that God despises those gatherings, that he won't listen to the songs of praise that they bring him, that he doesn't care about the offerings that they're giving and the prayers and the praise until they let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. You know, I think God is pretty clear on these issues. Even though there isn't anywhere in scripture where God directly speaks into the fashion industry, telling his people, you know, kind of, when you go into the land that I am giving you, thou shalt not shop at Primark. Until Matalan, thou feet shall not be drawn. I am the Lord your God, and I hate the fast fashion and the high street shops, so thou shalt not be clothed in their garments. You know, we, we, we don't see God speaking into these things directly because he was speaking into a different culture and a different world. But when we read God's word and when we understand the heart of God's message, we see a consistent call to live for justice, particularly justice for the most vulnerable within our world. The poor, the weak, widows, foreigners, strangers, those who might not be able to provide for themselves or could be suffering and struggling within a society. We're called to treat people with fairness, justice, compassion and equality. And we're called to be a people who use our choices, the decisions that we make, the resources that we have, the power that lies in our hands to make good choices, to uphold God's ways and his standards. But it's not just an issue of law, of trying to follow God's commands like some kind of legal document. You see, that was another mistake that the people of God had gotten themselves into in the time when Jesus came into the world. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and and many of the people, they followed the letter of the law, but they'd missed the heart of what was going on. So when Jesus speaks in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, if you want to look it up, There's a famous section where he says several times, you have heard, you have heard that it was said, but then goes on to take a deeper look to to reinterpret their understanding. So he says things like, you have heard, do not murder, but I tell you not to be angry with someone or to curse them. Or you have heard, it was said, do not commit adultery, but I tell you not to look lustfully at another person. Or you have heard that it was said that punishment should be eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, if someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn your other cheek to them as well. Jesus was saying to the people that although they followed legally the the letter of the law, they had missed the heart of God's message. Even though they were keeping those laws, they weren't really following God or bringing God's kingdom into the world. And it's the same for us today in what Jesus looks for us to be doing. You know, our shopping habits and the choices that we make would, I would imagine, normally be perfectly legal and fine within our laws. And and even some of the companies in the fast fashion industries that we've been thinking about tonight might be operating in ways that are perfectly legal in terms of the laws around welfare, and wages and conditions in the countries where they outsource their production to. But as followers of Jesus, we're called to look deeper, to think about God's heart and about his ideals. And if the ways that these companies are working isn't in line with what we believe about how God wants us to treat people 
and to treat our world and our environment, then perhaps we need to think about making some changes to our habits and the way that we shop. I know that as we think about it and look at these issues here tonight, it might seem like such a, a huge global issue and we can feel powerless to really make any changes within an industry this big. But I really believe that as consumers, we have the power to affect change within companies. Because if we change the way that we are buying, it has a knock-on effect on the production and the companies that we're buying from and the ways that they operate. And if we all choose to make even one or two simple changes to make little incremental changes, or just to become more aware of what's going on within these industries, then we really can have a big impact and make a difference, while still being as stylish and trendy as we ever were. Or not. <laughs> so, you might be thinking, well, what can I do? What differences can I make? And how do you even begin to to become more aware of what's going on and the ethics within these companies. So I'm going to hand over now to Sarah, who's going to share with us some ideas to think about or some ways that we can become more aware, can engage and can begin to make a difference within these issues. After hearing all of that information and all of the terrible things that are going on in our world, actually making a difference can seem pretty impossible. But we as consumers have power to change things depending on where we choose to shop. And thankfully, there are many things that we can do to shop more ethically. One of the things that I do when I'm unsure whether the place I'm buying for is ethical is to look up on the Good Shopping Guide website. It gives you a simple traffic light system of places to shop and ratings in different categories, like how they impact the environment, people and animals. You can use this website for more than just ethical fashion too. It gives guides on things like supermarkets, banks, technology and many other things. It's worth checking out. Another similar website is The Ethical Consumer, which gives you guides on what to look for in an ethical company and things to avoid. Unfortunately, most of the ethical places to shop are not av yet available in the high street. But if you are looking for places to shop where you can go in and have a look around, it's worth checking out if places have ethical options. Um, for example, h and have a conscience range available. Places like charity shops and thrift shops where you can buy second hand are also very useful. Um, there are now online short stores dedicated to buying and selling second-hand clothes, so apps like Vinted and Depop can be worth a look. There's also the option to buy less and work with what you already have at home. Only buying more clothes when you need them or if you're sure you'll get good use out of it helps greatly in cutting down waste. And fixing clothes that might be broken or torn is a fantastic way to do this too. Finally, we can share this information with the people around us and get involved with campaigns and support ethical companies. As, as the more popular and widespread it becomes, the more commonplace ethical shopping will be, and it'll get easier to find ethical options in the future. So as we close tonight, have a think about what changes you might make to shop more ethically from now on.